Hey everyone, welcome back to the AccuColor webinar series. Uh, I'm Ali from BenQ, and today we have a very unique, very special, probably one of my favorite webinars that we've uh, come to present. Uh, Giancarlo, welcome back. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me, Ali. Absolutely. And hello to everyone. Absolutely, yeah. It's your second webinar. Uh, last time you did an awesome shoot from your studio. Today we're on site doing photography in the world of custom car builds. Uh, Go ahead, man. Uh, welcome to the webinar. Take it away. Awesome. Well, thank you for having me and thank you to everyone for joining. Um, so I will, let's just start quickly before we get into anything. Uh, and I'll introduce the team and everyone. Uh, just so everyone knows as well, I will do a little bit of a talk, a little history. I'll give you the itinerary. Uh, we'll go into a little bit of workflow, the gear I use, and then we'll get into the live shoot and demo. Um, Ali will be live. He'll be sort of fielding some questions. If you have technical questions about BenQ, by all means. If not, uh, keep the questions rolling. I will try and answer them later on in the end. Uh, and we'll do a live Q&A while I'm actually shooting, as well as a live shoot. So we can answer there. Uh, let's begin by a quick little intro. Uh, first, and, first and most importantly, our subject and our wonderful host, Joe Merlo. Joe, feel free to come up. I know the camera can catch him. There we go, Joe. Uh, where, are we, where are we today? Location We're at our shop, secret location. Secret location. Yeah. Uh, awesome. And uh, Joe's been in the business for, well, I guess the, the whole family's been in the business for 52 years. 52 years. Yeah. Um, and so there's some awesome cars here. If you're a car fanatic like me, you'll love the spot. There's like a little Carmen Ghia. There's a Ford F100, it was? F100. F100. That's custom built. And that's what sort of will be the star of the show, other than Joe, of course. Um, so thank you. The truck more than you. No, well, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> but thank you, Joe. Um, let's introduce the rest of the team. Uh, Will, do you want to come? By all means. We got Will Prentice from Broncolor, Canada. Uh, anything you want to say in particular? Or any? Sure. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to provide the lighting. I've got the brand new Broncolor Saddles Pack and Pulso L lamps here, which John Carlos never been able to shoot with. Not many people in Canada have. So it's super rare. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a special treat, and we'll see how we can push this and uh, use the, the new technology to make this a really cool shoot. So, Absolutely. It'll be yeah, fun. So thank you, Bob. Thank you, Brown Color, of course. Uh, and next we have, yes, she might be shy, but she's not. My vicious, I'm kidding, I shouldn't say vicious, my lovely hair makeup artist, Brooke Bellavo. What, what's your Instagram? It's Beauty by Brooke Bellavo. Awesome. And uh, yeah, so... Yes, even though we're doing something a little grungy and whatnot, uh, I always will say, please have hair and makeup on set. Um, obviously, Joe has these beautiful blonde locks that we, I'm kidding. But how is that? No, just hair and makeup makes sense. You'll see why later on as we as we progress. Uh, but thank you again, Brooke. And yes. And then uh, the I guess the man behind the camera and my wonderful assistant, Martin, by all means, come up. Say hello. We'll introduce you. Hello. <laughs> this is how can they follow you on Instagram? What's your handle? Uh, my handle is the Martin Tam on Instagram. As in the Martin Tam, the only one. Yes. Awesome. Well, thank you, Martin. I appreciate it. All right, we'll get right into it. And again, if you have any questions, by all means, feel free to ask. Let's. Hello and welcome, everyone. Finally, uh, my name is John Carlo Palak, and I'm an editorial and commercial photographer based here in Toronto, Canada. Now, I first want to thank. Ben Q, of course, for this opportunity to not only showcase my work, uh, but also the equipment, the gear that I use, and obviously the team and the process of it. I think a lot of people nowadays tend to shoot uh, and not shoot with intention, and I'm trying to sort of change that, if you will. So if anything, the takeaway from today is if it's something educational, ace. If it's something in terms of gear knowledge that you might gain, amazing as well. Uh, but more than anything, I'd love to also inspire you if possible. Let's begin. A little backer about me. Uh, whether it be a simple portrait session or a commercial photo shoot that I do, I firmly believe that unbounded creativity is a result of working collaboratively with the team. Give a little background as to myself uh, and title it as turning a passion into a career. And there's a great quote from Catherine Hepburn. I've used this quote many times, but it simply states, if you have to support yourself, you had bloody well be better find some way that is going to be interesting. And I guess to say, I mean, let's put it this way. Photography is very interesting and I love the people I meet and I work with. Many may not know this, uh, but I actually began my self-taught career about two decades ago shooting automotive and in particular motorsports across North America. And have since then moved to portrait fashion and commercial work. 
Take a little while to load. That's all right. Um, so since then, my focus has then shifted a bit more into editorial and commercial work for brands such as Jaguar Land Rover, Toyota, Nissan, Porsche, and others. My passion is still fueled by these incredible machines that you even see behind me, uh, both in terms of the wonderful finesse that comes to uh, having these vehicles and created them, as well as the power of them. Looking back at all these years, I would have never imagined that I would be here. Now, what started off as a simple hobby and a passion quickly turned into something which is a career and a life path that I've chosen uh, for the last 20 years. Who would have thought that one day, just as you've seen on the screen in front of you, uh, that I would be shooting a 575 horsepower Jaguar F-Type R um, SBR uh, for Jaguar Land Rover in Canada? Never would have thought it happened, but it did. On to my next point, take risks and persevere. There's a great quote from an American documentary photographer, uh, but if Paul Kowilke, which says, if photographs are strong, they will find their audience sooner or later. Later is not necessarily a bad thing. It leaves more time for making the photographs, which after all is everything. Now, I won't be the first or the last person to say to keep on shooting. The more you do, the more you hone your craft and the more you hone your creative vision. Remember, nothing good has come from simple efforts. Throughout the years, I've been able to hone my creative vision and I would describe my signature style as being a blend of having an edgy feeling with vibrant colors. And you'll see more of that today in a live demo. With each project that I take on, be it paid or creative, I try to push forward, be it with my lighting, with my creative vision, and ultimately with the workflow that I have. Now, the images and workflow that I produce now ultimately outweigh those that I produced in the past. And I'm glad, and the same should happen to you. Keep learning and always evolve. Now, there's a great quote from Elliot Erwitt, who's an American photographer, and it says to me, photography is an art of observation. It's about finding something interesting in an ordinary place. I find it has little to do with the things you see and everything to do with the way you see them. Now, this is a great uh, tweet that I saw back in the day, now known as X. Uh, and it's funny because I actually found this tweet I've now incorporated into, into my presentation because I think it's super, super relevant. Uh, it's from Jerry Saltz, who's a senior art critic uh, in the New York Magazine. And it simply says, artists, never try to guess what your audience wants. Your audience doesn't know what it wants to see until after they see it. Who knew, who knew we'd want to see a large Pollock, Jackson Pollock, canvas splattered with dripping paint? Now, what he's referring to is, and I giggle because teach their own, of course, is this. It's a wonderful painting by Jackson Pollock called Number 5 from 1948, and it sold for $140 million. Um, and uh, I'll leave it at that, to each their own. But for $140 million, I definitely would not do that. I'd probably buy a couple of Paganis, you know, we'll see. All right. Uh, growing as a photographer and as an artist, you should always keep learning and always push your boundaries. Now, in the past few years, I have fallen back in love with black and white or monochromatic photography, as well as both in natural and in strobes or using both natural and strobes, natural and strobes. Um, to some, black and white photography is the most raw form of shooting because of film, of course, as it removes any influence in the way of the actual subject matter because there are no colors. Now, with each and every shoot that I do, I try and incorporate a black and white session in my shoot. That way I can continue to evolve my craft. Workflow. Now we're going to get into the nitty gritty of it. So simply put, workflow is one's process from start to finish, or for us photographers, the creative vision to the final output. Now to give you some context, this is an example of workflow, of taking a vision to reality. Now in this case, for example, there are certain elements to what workflow are, and I'll get into them. But in this case, it was a shoot for, um, the concept rather was Cyberpunk 2077, which is a video game. Um, set in the future, of course. And as you can see by the graphic of the actual logo, it's yellow and blues and really bright colors. 
Uh, and so that in turn was the actual theme or the concept or the vision to then refine to get to the final end result. You'll see the same sort of idea here as I have some examples in the demo. Now in the process or part of the process, these are the key figures for you to know. The first is inspiration, followed by the concept, a mood board, a call sheet, the team itself, your gear, your setup, the shoot itself, the post-processing or editing, and lastly, the end results. Those are, those are the key elements of what the process or workflow is for a photo shoot. Now, in reference to this shoot with Joe, the inspiration for this, as you can see, is sort of the car builder magazines. Uh, I guess Hot Rod would be one of the big magazines, right, Joe? So, so Hot Rod magazine is a great, great thing. I don't know if we'll get you on the cover. We'll see. Um, but uh, Hot Rod magazine, for example, or the car builder magazines is sort of the concept for this shoot. Also incorporating some moody portraits and what I would consider Americana car culture. Uh, we do have obviously an old Ford here that's been redone. We're sort of in this you know, warehouse, garage area type of thing. So it all sort of ties into that. And that's the inspiration behind today's live demo photo shoot. Now, the concept in this is to have the idea of the builder, Joe in this case, in his element. So he's here, he's in the shop. Um, so he'll be doing his things, he'll be grinding, he'll be maybe hammering, who knows? We'll, we'll see what we'll get, we'll get him doing. Uh, but it's to capture Joe as the builder in his element. In turn, also the builder working and then ultimately, I would think, end with a nice little sort of portrait of the builder itself. So the mood board for this, and I apologize for, for it being a little pixelated, but the mood board for this is, again, I want to keep it sort of um, retro, if you will. It's sort of the American car culture theme. Um, and the key with the mood board is you want to outline specific themes that you want. So items like, for example, for, for um, Brooke, it'd be her hair, the hair and the makeup and the styling of that. How would that, now in this case, in, with Joe, obviously, you know, we have certain limitations that we can do, right? We're not gonna try and put tons of makeup on them. We're not gonna, you know, glam them up. Sorry, Joe, unfortunately, no bikini today. Um, but we, in this case, what I want is I want something that is a little more flat, a little more subtle. There's a lot of lights here and it's kind of grungy, right? So I just want some, some evenness. But in order for Brooke to know what I want, the mood board is obviously key for that. Now, aside from that, obviously outfits or styling or wardrobe is the other element, of course, as part of the, war the mood board. For this, very simple. Uh, Joe actually, believe it or not, uh, was wearing a red shirt before. And I thought the red shirt was obviously too contrasty with the blue truck that you see behind me. Um, so I asked him if he had a different shirt. He said, sure, he brought out this charcoal shirt, which is perfect. But those are little sort of dec decision points that really end um, or make for a great end result and photograph. Now the call sheet, something that's very crucial, of course, it has all the details that pertain to the photo shoot. So pertain rather to the photo shoot. So the time, the date, the concept, uh, contact numbers, the address, things of this nature. This is something that's obviously crucial for today. We have five people here. They all need to know how to get here, what time they have to be here. Um, and we have to test and set up, right? So a call sheet is very, very crucial. There's also a bit of a shoot brief and that itself details what the shoot is about or what we're trying to get, how many sets are we doing? We said in this case, we're trying to get maybe two sets if we can, Joe. One, obviously a portrait of Joe, and then we'll move on to supplementary shots of him maybe grinding or doing work, if you will. And then obviously the notes section for additional information if needed. The call sheet. Oh. There we go, the team, choosing the ideal people. Now, this is very crucial and to me is the most important part of any photo shoot, um, whether it be yourself and your assistant, yourself and a makeup artist, who you choose in your team is crucial, um, not just for the simple fact of them doing the skill or the role that they have, but also the fact that they add another pair of eyes, another set of experiences, another set of knowledge base. All those little details really come together and as I put there, the synergy of the crew is really what makes, I think, the end result even better. Um, if people don't get along, if there's not a certain vibe, that makes things a little weird and awkward to shoot. Gear in setup. So for this, what camera am I using? What lens am I using? Um, for example, my options today, I was gonna go with maybe a 70 to 200, which is a big telephoto lens, but obviously to get Joe and the vehicle in together, 
might be a little bit challenging, but I also want to showcase the vehicle. So it makes sense to go a little bit wider. So it's all these sort of things that you have to take into consideration. What lighting options am I have? Well, I have these fluorescent lights, by the same token, I'm gonna be using strobes. So for this, what power am I gonna set them to? What, what is the distance? Am I gonna use an octobox? Am I gonna use a reflector? Am I using grids? Am I gonna use a gel? All those little factors have to be taken into account. And last but not least, of course, am I in the studio or on location? Now, the beauty of being in the studio is everything's at arm's reach. If I need a C-stand, it's there. Here we're on location, prime example, and one of the issues was we couldn't get the slides going. So when you're on location, there's things you have to take into consideration uh, that you wouldn't necessarily if you're at home or in your studio. The shoot itself, that's the actual fun part as I consider it. Um, and that only happens or should happen rather when everything is ready, when your hair and makeup is ready, when the styling is set up. So the hair and makeup for Joe, for example, was done off camera prior to us going live. The styling was done. Remember I mentioned about him wearing a red shirt and not switching to the gray shirt? Makes a big difference. So once everything is dialed in, then you can start shooting. For post-processing, I'll get, dive into this a little fairly quickly. Uh, my, st my step is very easy. I will do a bunch of shoot or I'll do the shoot, load the images in, I use Capture One. And in this case, my culling process is simple. I mark it two if it's a keeper. I mark it three if it's very good. That's it. Uh, very rarely is there an image that's a four out of five or five out of five, um, but that makes it easier. And from there, I then move into the selects based on what the culling is, go into global adjustments of white and color balance or uh, white balance rather, the precision editing, which is removing blemishes, things that I don't like, anything distracting here, for example, I might even Photoshop the actual strobe. I don't know if you can see it there. I might actually Photoshop this out, right? Or, or that's, I don't know what that is, a little reel in the back over there. Um, so that, for example, will happen in Photoshop. And last, of course, color grading, which is what adds the feel to the image, right? Am I going dark? Am I going uh, a little bit colder? Am I going warmer, right? Might go warmer, obviously, because we've got sparks and everything else. And warmer might also work with blue, right? It's the car, a little contrasting. And then the result, ultimately, where will the images go? Are they going for a mag submission? Are they going for social? Um, are they a creative? Are they a commercial shoot, right? Is Joe going to use this to promote the, the, the business, let's say? All those sort of things really you have to take into consideration for the end user or the result. What photo gear do I use? Let's get into that. Well, it simply depends on what I'm shooting. Now, is it something fast paced like fashion? Is it something slower like today, for example, where I'm doing more portrait type work? All those sort of things matter. And at the end of the day, it really comes down to what makes sense for you. Now, workflow for me, I'm just sort of giving you the bare bones essentials, what I think would work. But everyone is different. Everyone's experience is different and everyone's gear is different. Um, what might work for this shoot will definitely not work for another shoot. Now, yes, at the end of the day, a camera is just a camera. But if I'm, for example, shooting Joe and I'm using strobes, well, then I might not want, for example, a old school four by five film camera because there's so much more of a process to get the job done. Doesn't mean you can't shoot a four by five film camera, but it just wouldn't make logical sense. So my photo gear or my go-to photo gear for this uh, is the Canon EOS R3 as well as the R5. We're actually using the R5 right now. Um, a 24 to 105, which is a nice, beautiful, what I consider my everything lens. A 7 to 200, both RF mount. My tether tools cable, of course, the USB-C to USB-C right angle. Um, I have the tether tools tether block, which is what secures it underneath the camera. You'll see later on. Everything will be captured or rather tethered into Capture One software which again, you will see live. My beautiful brown color strobes, shadow brown color. Uh, and then obviously Mac, Apple MacBook Pro. And then now depending whether I'm on location or I'm in studio, whether, whether it be a, you know, it might be a 24 inch, a 27 or 32 inch BenQ monitor. In the studio, I have a 32 inch. And today, for example, we have a 24 inch. Uh, this is the SW240, which I'll get into a little bit later. Now there's, for software, there are many debates as to which software is better. And again, just like a camera or the workflow, 
it has to suit you. Now, it can be Adobe's Lightroom, uh, which is a great piece of software, or Phase One's Capture One software. Now, since I started my tethering process and workflow about, I'd say about 10, 15 years ago, um, I have obviously switched from Lightroom to Capture One. I just find it a little bit more stable. And more than anything, I just simply love the raw conversions. The raw conversions to JPEG is phenomenal. What display do I use? Well, it is a BenQ seminar or webinar after all. Um, and Photogear is great to have, but you also have to work with what makes sense for you and the proper display for you. Because the issue being, and I'll get into it, is if you're not using a larger external display, you truly are missing out. Now, in the studio, which if you saw in the last webinar, you can see it. I think, I believe it's on YouTube. Um, you'll see the tether cart with my PD3205 uh, monitor. Now, that's a beautiful 32-inch 4K display. It is USB-C powered, so therefore, when I connect this MacBook Pro, it works. It charges it as well as also connects to it. Um, yes, it has a solid metal monitor arm, which is amazing. Now, for my home setup, again, BenQ as well. I have a PD2700, as well as the SW271 uh, and 270C, rather, which is a 2K display, which is absolutely phenomenal. Now, onto the meat and bones. For on location and this particular live demo, as you can see in the camera, as you can see here, this is the SW. Let's see if I can rotate it. There we go. So you guys can see here. This is the SW240 from BenQ, and I have this on a Tether Tools low boy stand. It's a roller stand that's locked off. So for this, why do I tend to use this? Well, it's very simple. One, it's super light. It's 24 inches, which is plenty bigger than 15 and plenty for when you're on location. But more importantly, for me as a photographer, it's color accurate. It's 100% sRGB. It's 99% of the RGB color gamut spectrum, which is phenomenal. And above and beyond anything else, um, in particular, even like my Max, which I do color calibrate every month, the BenQ monitors are hardware calibrated. Meaning when you calibrate the color on the monitors using their master element software, or sorry, palette master element software, it actually hard calibrates it onto the hardware itself. Um, and there's a bunch of lookup tables or LUTs, as they call them, that you can also adjust. So it's actually so accurate that it makes my life easier. Now, there's also another advantage, which is prime example. We're on location here. I don't want five people or six people or 10 people huddled around this tiny little monitor or this tiny little display, if you will, right, on the, on the MacBook Pro. It's 15-inch. Even though you have the 16-inch, it's still 16 inches. In this case... I have a 24 inch that I can literally put anywhere. It's on a rolling stand. So I can move this and put it wherever. I can put this, you know, 10 feet away and it's still going to work. And it's great because the whole team can see as well as I can see when I'm shooting. So you'll see the benefits of it later on. Now, I love this saying because I think it's great. Uh, but one of, my, one of my favorite things, of course, about being a professional photographer is that I legit get paid to meet incredible people and work with incredible people. Now, there's a wonderful saying that I love to say, which is more heads are better than one. And part of that is in relation to having the efficient workflow, in relation to having, you know, the gear that you need, every single member of the team, whether it be hair, makeup, whether it be even the subject, whether it be the client, has an integral part in the end result of the image. Everyone has their input. Everyone has their experiences. Everyone has different upbringing. So there's things that I will not see that Joe will see. Or, you know, Joe built the car. Joe might say, hey, listen, you know what? This is a really bad angle. Let me show you something that's really rare. Let me show you this, this, you know, whatever, this, this grill cover, for example, right? That might be rare to track down and somehow he found it, right? And that's a, a you know, a pride point for him, something he's excited about. That's something I would not know. I don't have that intimate knowledge of the truck. He does, he built it, right? Um, in terms of hair and makeup, there's something I won't see that Brooke will see. So if I can have everyone's input on things as I'm shooting, the end result will always, always be far better. And as I always say, turning a vision to reality. So you focus on the magic moment. Focus less on the technical, get more to create that magic moment and capture that one image that really stands out. Now I'll simply conclude before we get into the live demo. 
And it simply says, whatever your passion is, find your passion and follow it. So it doesn't matter if you shoot babies, if you want to shoot cars. I hope you want to shoot cars. Uh, but if you want to shoot bikes, uh, motorcycles, it doesn't matter. But find that passion, fuel that passion, and shoot it. And I'll leave off with my favorite quote of all time from Alfred Stieglitz, uh, which says, in photography, or in photography, there's a reality so subtle that it becomes more real than reality. So we're going to show you that today in the live demo that None of this is real. This is happening in real time. But the reality is, at the end result, we're going to get an image. But that image was crafted. That's what you have to remember. That image was crafted. It was all our experiences, all our knowledge that came together to make that real. Now, time for the live demo. Um, if you can see here, I have the live demo team again, just so you guys can follow them on socials. Myself, John Carlo Pollock at Pollock Photo. We have Martin Tam at the Martin Tam. We have Lighting Tech and Bronze Color Brand Manager Will uh, at Bronze Color Canada, or is it Captura? Okay, at Bronze Color Canada. Uh, we have hair makeup artist Brooke Beliveau at Beauty by Brooke Beliveau. Uh, and our subject or builder in this case is Joe Murillo. Do you want to give a shout out to anyone? No? All right. Uh, and we're here at the location undisclosed all right now on to the fun part which is the photo shoot i'm excited about the photo shoot awesome which shot one oh, or full battery on the detail look at that full battery okay so let me close this and share uh oh hold on a second i need that screen all right, so give us one second, folks, because we are going to prepare. For this. Uh, I don't want that. I want Capture One Live. Uh, let's see if you guys can see that. Where is Enter Full Screen? There we go. Okay, tell me if you guys can see this. If you have any questions, by all means, feel free to shout it out. Can you guys see that? <clears throat> yeah, we see the last photo you took. The last, yeah, that was that was a test photo. We just wanted to make sure it works. All right, no, they can see it. I need to see it. Oh, yeah, the, we the, see it. Huh? well, the stream. Well, let's start shooting. But anyways, all right, so. Yeah, this is locked in. Beautiful, guys. All right. Okay, so now we can sort of start seeing things. And I'm sharing that screen so you guys are good. It's the laptop good. Okay, beautiful. Thank you. All right, so yeah, if you have any questions, I can't see the chat right now. But if you have questions, feel free to ask everybody. Oh, it's working. It's working. Beautiful. Uh, yes. Yeah, so let's. Yeah, let's do that. Thank you. All right. So, ooh, yeah, a little bit of slack, right? Yeah, let's bring it over just in case. Beauty. Yeah, that's fine. Beautiful. All right. So, uh, if anyone has any questions, I don't know. Are there any questions there? I can't see anything, Ali. So. I trust you. Uh, so far, no questions. Yet. Okay, no worries. Um, all right, so I'm shooting with the Canon ESR3. We have the 24105 here. Uh, and we're obviously shooting with the Bronc Color Sato system, which is a phenomenal pack and head. Uh, I think we should start with the portrait. I think that's sort of a nice way of sort of getting yeah. into, into the gist of things. Um, so, Monami. Come come up, Joe. Come All right. So um Brooke, I don't know if you want to come up. I don't know if you want to explain sort of oh Joe, hold on. Let's get you up here. here. Yeah. Okay, so see, so so Brooke's like, I gotta touch him up real quick. And I'm just like, okay. But it, you want to explain sort of what you did makeup wise or did like a very light foundation 
just to even out the skin tone. And the important part for men is mostly not to be overly shiny. Yeah, so no overly shininess. Unless we want to be sweaty. Right, and right. Then we, make, then we make sweat. Then we make sweat happen. Then we make sweat happen. <laughs> yeah, just bucket of water. Um, no, that's good. So, so that's that's key, right? So obviously, and it sounds silly because people would say, oh, but you know, you don't have to, you don't need that. But you have to realize it, it does make absolute sense for the simple fact that like, it makes my life easier with Photoshop. I don't have to worry about shininess or anything. Um, but we are going to have Joe here. And obviously, we should be okay here. We're fine. Um, and we will have, let's have you. Yeah, we'll have you standing first. Let's do a quick little test. Um, and we got just two strobes now, right? Okay. So turn it off first. So, uh, so is this one on? They're all on. Okay, perfect. Okay, so let me just turn one first because I want to, let me just set that. Okay, so let's see where we're at. What is this? There goes on. All right, now let me just quickly test and tell me if you guys see anything. Did it load? On the computer? The last thing. Am I connected? Is it on the computer? Oh, you know why? I think is that's why. Hold on. There you go. That's why. What the? There we go. Okay. Capture the first to last. Hold on. There we go. That's better. Okay. So let me just do another shot and hopefully we should see. So I don't mind that. So the big thing I want to make sure is that we have some cat tits. We have cat tits. It looks good. Yeah, I don't mind the back now. It looks good. Okay, give me one more second, Joe. Just see where we're at here. Oh. Okay, so I don't mind that angle. Okay, so I don't mind that. Let's raise that up just a little. I put you down. You look good, Joe. I just have to be very mindful of this because if I don't do that, let's see. Okay, let's see. I can see that's good. All right, so. We have that. So, okay, so we have the first light set up, and that worked great, all right? Because I illuminated Joe the way sort of I wanted to be, and I like a much tighter angle than the previous one, which is this. Um, and we see a little bit of the car here. Now, the only issue I have with this is I might have Joe. Can we have you step in a little bit more? Yeah, there. Just because it's it's kind of blocking he, him here. So I want to see how much better this looks. Look at Joe doing his modeling mean face. Oh. Anyway, that's actually not bad. I like that. Okay, so then can we set up the second one? Let's fire that on. And just, just a little kiss on that one. Yeah. So that's a, what size is that? It's the 180 by 120? Yeah. 80 by 120, nice. Yeah, let me do a quick little test again and see where we're at. Uh, it's 50 mil. Oh. Back out. Let's see where we're at. Yeah, it's not bad. It's a little bit of fill. Can I get you to open, yeah, open it up a little more? Just feather a little bit more that way. Yeah, just because I want a little bit more spill onto the car. Perfect. Oh. There you go. That's a bit better. Okay. Uh, that's filled nicely. I like that. All right. Now we can fire up the grid. So you see what's happening? So this this one's literally just illuminating you there. Um, and there's a prime example. Where's the camera? There you go. Hey, camera. So there's a prime example 
Joe wanted to see sort of what I'm doing, right? And he's curious, whatever, but let's face it, I'm taking a portrait of him. He wants to know what he looks like. Now he can, right? Um, I don't know if you can spin the camera around, but there you go. So Joe sees what you guys see directly, right? Which is good. Now we're going to be setting up the third light. I don't know if you can see back there. It's right up there. I don't know if you can see that, Martin. Well, that's, that's good. You put it back on the tripod if you want. Um, so yeah, so that one is now gel. That's a purple. Yeah, it's, a, it's got a purple gel. Uh, and part of that just to add a little bit more color because, I mean, let's face it. It looks good, but we need something a little bit more of a kick, right? So let's see what we got here. Let's see. Ooh, we got a little bit. So now if you guys can see here, we have a little bit of purple on the back, right? Which I do like. I do like that actually. Can we can we pitch it a little bit more this way? Gotta watch the hood, but it does Yeah, 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 no, no. I would actually I would actually move it here okay. if possible. Yeah. Can we move this show if possible? Oh, Oh, perfect. Yeah, that's fine. You go back to your... Yeah, yeah, you're the model. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah you're not the to... muscle, not the model. The muscle and the model. is a combo both. Okay. So I don't mind that. The only issue, just so you understand what the, where the workflow comes, um, or the issue with the shot is, if you notice, it's... it's it has an answer, kick of color, which I do like. Um, but it's only sort of hitting him on the shoulder and a little bit on the face. And I want it to be a little bit more pronounced in that sense. Um, so it feels it more. And the reason I went with purple, I could have gone with other colors, of course. But the only reason I went with purple, obviously, is I think it kind of works well with the blue. Um, if I had gone with red, I think it would have been too much. Um, yeah, and I just, I don't know. The, the red just, it, it's a little weird. It's weird for me in that sense for this. Uh, but I think this works. Let's see where we're at here. All right. Yeah, I'm waiting. Yeah, I'm waiting for it to to go to the next one. There we go. Okay, so now it's filled a little more. Okay, let's yeah, let's take a little bit more. It's a little too too much spell. There you go. Perfect. It's another test. Let's see where we're at. Come on, upload. Uh, let's knock the power down a bit if we can on that, Will. Yep. Perfect. Let's see. Here we go. Let's go a little wider, too. Ugh. That could have been bad. That was a super misfire. I know, huh? I know, I know, eh? Damn cannons. That's a little bit better. There you go. That's a bit better. Okay. Because I want it to be just there. But that looks good. Okay, Joe. So now here's the thing. Um, do you have a wrench or something? Do you have a lucky wrench? Oh, he's got a wrench and a hammer. Two things. You... Um, just give me the wrench. No, no hammer. Let's... And what I want is I want you sort of leaning on the car. Exactly. Um, yeah, I like that. Yeah, put your put your hip and the weight on it. There you go. I want you, yeah, there you go. Look at me. Good. Actually, let me see. Let's see if they'll fire these off naturally. I don't think this will update. Will this change naturally? I'm not stuck in the last image. All right. Let's see if you guys can see that. All right, here we go. Let's take a few series. A bit here. Wide. Yeah. So, what was the actually story behind the truck as well, Joe? I don't know if you want to share that. Yeah, well, this uh, this truck was my wife's. This is my wife's truck. We built it for her. Her father bought this truck new in 1977. Wow. Used it as a farm truck and um, used it to haul hay, haul cattle. 
just everything. All so you learn to drive on this truck. And then it was stored away. We thought it was gone, but it was stored away in the back of a barn for 30 years. And uh, uh, it came home with us. And the process started. It was a five-year build. And uh, we just couldn't decide if we wanted to go back to original or if we wanted to change it, go right. completely modern or a bit of a mix of both. And that's what we went with. It was a mix of both modern and old. What's your favorite feature of the truck? I love the engine. It's It's got a lot of blink to it. The twin turbo is a nice setup. It looks good, sounds good. Twin Double turbo, five-liter V8? Twin turbo, five-liter Ford Mustang V8. Beautiful. Yep. That's beautiful. That sounds great. Um, okay, so the, the, the reason I'm asking is because I wanted to get an idea as to what him as a builder wants, right? And what his passion. Now, he obviously said the engine is something he likes, so... If anything, let's have, let's do this. Let's do some action job. Let's have you sort of leaning on on the hood type of thing, as if you're sort of looking in the engine type of thing. And I'm going to try and get a little higher. I'm going to do one quick thing. Let's change this up. Let me get a stool here. That's still sorry. This guy. All right. And Ali, I don't know if there's any questions or anything, but if there are, feel free to yell. Yeah, a couple oh, of yeah. questions and a comment. Yeah, go go for it. I'm I'm shooting, but I'm going to try and answer. So go for it. Okay. Uh, LC Jones uh, is asking you, what is the best advantage of being able to have the large screen on location for you? Ooh, good question. So the the big well, there's many events. The biggest one I think is ultimately the fact that where, where's the camera? There we go. The biggest one. Um, is ultimately the fact that I'm able to see everything in real time this big, right? And for two reasons. One, most people always start off with a screen like this. And this is good. Now, the problem with this, though, on a technical point of view, is I can't necessarily say that this is color accurate. I can't necessarily say that this is going to show me everything that I'm supposed to see. Now, it's almost I almost consider this like a preview window, if, if you will. Um, and our cameras have come a long way, but the next step above this obviously is to go to a laptop, whether it be a PC or an Apple, it doesn't really matter, but now you're getting 13 inches, 15 inches, 14, 16 inches, whatever it is to a viewing space. Then you obviously can step up to the monitor. Now the advantage of going bigger, if I could have a 40 inch display, I would is prime example. Joe is there and I can say, okay, Joe, and then this a shot, as you guys can see here, for example, you know, it almost looks like the back of your shirt is actually purple, right? So, and the other thing is, for example, there's a logo on the shirt. Well, if I can't see that, and I, I'm definitely not going to see it on the back of this. But I can now obviously see this and direct Joe, right? And at the same token, Joe can now knows exactly what I'm referring to because I can't say, oh, Joe, by the way, turn this way so I can see this because he doesn't know what this way means. But if I show him the last shot that I took in that big screen and he's, what are you, 20 feet away, Right. He knows what I can, I can say, oh, do you see the purple? I almost see it. He can see it. But then I say, listen, I just want the purple hitting you, but I want you to open your chest towards me. Now, again, in real time, he can see it, right? So there's that. And keep in mind, he's a subject, right? So the subject is part of the process. I can coach. I can say camera left, camera right. You have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. But visually, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So it takes all that guessing game away all right so let's do that again um let's get the wrench let's get the wrench on what would you lean on you lead on would you lean on your left what would you naturally lean on yep lean on my left so i can work with my right okay perfect so let's do that so let's have you let's have you lean and perfect and then turn over yeah i'm just gonna step a little higher now i went a little higher just so you guys get an idea because if you notice the portraits originally were of Joseph was standing from the truck, which looked nice, right? But he mentioned that he loves the engine. The engine, well, showcase that, right? If that's what he loves, and that's what he's saying, that that's the, the pride and joy. Let's work with that, right? Perfect. And then that's good. Beautiful. I'm going to go a little bit tighter, too. Good. Yeah, look at the truck itself, though, Joe. There you go. Nice. Good. Okay, and then bring your attention to me. Eyes to me right there. Good. Let's go a little wider. There you go. Nice. I like that. So I'm shooting a little crazy here. What? Okay. So I'm going a little crazy here, right? But I'm trying to give you an idea as to what I'm trying to do. Now, in this case, for example, a lot better. 
right? If I have him turn, right? He knows what I mean. So by the same token, I can be like, okay, Joe. So here's the issue I have is I can't see the wrench, right? So Joe doesn't know I can't see the wrench. He's just, he's doing what he's supposed to be doing, right? But I can, I can correct. I can coach and say, okay, Joe, I need you to have the wrench outside so I can see a little bit of the wrench, right? We're trying to kind of stage this, right? You want to make it look real, but you kind of want to make it look better than real, if you will. So let's have you back again with the wrench. Not, exactly. Let's have you exactly have the wrench out. Right there. Perfect. Let's do another series. Good. And then as I meet Joe right there. Beautiful. Love that. Hold up there. Awesome. All right. So let's go back. Oh, it's still loading. That's all right. But there you go. So now, so if you want to find a portrait, there you go. Now we have, we have Joe with the wrench, right? That I just then directed him so I can see more, right? Adds more to the story. So again, back to my point of collaborating and letting everyone be part of the team. The monitor in this case with LC Jones, like that answers that question, right? You can direct, you can coach, right? The whole team. I can be like, oh no, there's a hot spot in his forehead, Brooke. And Brooke's like, where? And I'm like, right there, right? Brooke is 20 feet away. She might not be able to see, right? There isn't, don't worry. She's looking at me like, there is? I'm kidding. Uh, if there's any more questions, by all means, feel free to ask. Let's continue shooting. I don't know if there are any more questions, but... Yeah, uh, one more. Maybe you and uh, Martin can answer this one. Uh, sure. LC wants to know, what is the process for color correcting on the BenQ photography monitors? Wow. Uh, um, color correcting in what sense? Like color correcting the image? Uh, let's find out. Calibrating the monitor. Color. Oh, so okay. So the process for color calibrating the monitor. So there's two ways. You can do it uh, software, which is how most people sort of color calibrate their things, uh, their displays rather. Um, but BenQ has a piece of software that you can download. It's free, um, and that itself makes a hardware adjustment on the actual. Um, uh, sorry, sorry, a firmware adjustment rather, not hardware. A firmware adjustment on the actual display itself. Uh, meaning the lookup table. So for example, what ends up happening is if I'm using this MacBook Pro and, and Will, for example, brings his crappy PC because PC suck. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, brings his PC, for example, and he plugs it in. Guess what? This monitor is 100% color accurate, right? Now, it might not display, you know, the way his, his laptop does, but when both plug into this, because it's color corrected and calibrated, it's on, it's on the money, regardless of what you sort of plug into that sense, right? As opposed to normally when it's software, it's dependent on the system you plug it into and there's a whole bunch of things. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that one is necessarily better than the other, but in this case, it is for the fact that um, it won't change, right? And it's actually done on the monitor itself. So it doesn't matter sort of what you plug into, it's done. But yeah, good question. I think that answered it, right? Give or take, I think, maybe, anyways. Um, all right, so let's do another thing just because I don't mind this, but let's get you sitting. I'm gonna give you your, your trusty workbench, work seat. Is that too low for you or is that? Good. That's good? Okay, so um, give me, uh, just throw, yeah, let's get you a tool as well. And do we have, do we have any shop rags or anything by any chance? There's a blue one right there. There's a blue, ah, there you go, I like that. Blue shop rag, and I'm going to take some props because props are cool. Right, Joe? <laughs> so, prime example, we have props there. We have Joe. I'm going to go a little bit wider here. I don't know if you guys can see, but let's back out of this. There we go. Perfect. All right, so let's see what we're looking at. Um, okay, so, Joe, let's have you. Okay, let me do a quick little test. So, so Joe can see exactly what I what I'm seeing. So, I don't mind this, actually. Uh, yeah, we gotta lower that. Yeah. Give you a little bit of a, of a purple, purple hat, that's all right. A little purple dye in the hair, yeah. It's being all risque Must today. <laughs> Must be fun. Um, so this I don't mind, right? But the issue I have with this, right? And Joe won't know, Joe's just sitting there doing his thing, is in this case, 
right? Like, oh, here, let's let's get the, let's get the team involved. Martin, come in. That's all right. What? So, what would you see as an issue here, right? In terms of Joe's posing, just posing in particular. Uh, his right leg is a little bent backwards. So okay. It's split a little. Okay, so the right leg is bent backwards, meaning you don't really see. I mean, you don't see Joe's foot, right? Now, Joe doesn't know this. Joe's just sitting there doing what he's supposed to do, right? I asked him to sit, right? But in this case, I can be like, okay, Joe, you see how I don't see your foot? I need to see your foot a little, right? So he adjusted accordingly, right? So it's all those little things that make a difference. All right, let's get back shooting. All right, I don't know if I'm blocking the camera, and if I am, I apologize. And again, if you guys have questions, ask away, but this is good, Joe. I like this. There you go. Let's go a little higher. Let's go this way. There we go. Good. Good. Now lean into that that uh, that elbow there, Joe. Yeah, just yeah, lean. There you go. I love that. Hold on there for a sec. Good. Good. Now relax the mouth. Relax the face. You're overthinking. I know he's being super Zoolander right now. He's getting giving the intensity. Oh, you guys can't see. There you go. You see it loading. So that you know that like right. It's a lot better of a pose. Right, it's a lot. It, you can actually see both legs. The purple, for example, if you notice, it's sort of clipping him on the side. We can even pitch it down a little bit more if possible, so it doesn't hit his head so much. Right, but prime example, Will here being my lighting tech today, right from Bron Color, this is great. He can see this and he knows what I'm referring to. I'm like, okay, do you see that there? And Will's like, oh yeah, I see it. Right, I don't have to then put the camera down, do this, and start. Everyone is on the same page. Right, Will's job today, for example. Is the lighting tech, so I'm 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 relying on him to sort of, sort of figure out if you will what my brain's sort of thinking what my end result is right, so, so far we're good here. Let's do a couple another shot just because. Good, I love that little smirk. That's good, Joe. I like that smirk. I like that. See, it's good. Joe's great. He's a sphere. He's trying to be all all tough guy. Right, we got a little bit of spill. That's all right. That's all right. I, I don't mind that actually. Oh, look at that. Look at that smile. Look at that. That's golden. That's golden. That's that is the Christmas card. There we go. That's beautiful. Awesome. So I like that rag there. Let's have you play with that. We're gonna do a little freestyle and we'll start shooting around you type of thing, but this looks good. Yeah, just do the thing. Look at the rag. Yeah, there you go. Now the one thing I will add, just because if everyone can see here is visually, of course, this is not bad. He, he's doing his thing. But the problem is, I don't know if I can see down here, but we're, there's, there's not much detail, right? We got the license plate. We get we get the front of the car. But let's throw some stuff here. So let, let's mess it up a little. Throw that here. Maybe a little, like a little bit. Of, on in here. No, no, okay. no, no, you, no need. We're good. We just got to get just some, some stuff. We'll throw a rag there. We should be okay. Just a rag. Work area, not just I know, I know. I'm creating a big hazard for Joe here, unfortunately. All right, so here we go. That's a little bit better. Good, yeah. And then eyes on me, Joe. Beautiful. Love that. Love that. There you go. Love that. Beautiful. All right, so let's see. Oh, we're still back in that. No, still loading. All right, so let's see where we're at. There you go. So that's not too bad. It's a little bit messy, but I don't mind that as well. And he's just sort of cleaning his tool like that. I like, right? Because it's natural. It's him just doing his thing. I called his name for, to get attention. I got a little blinker. That's all right. It happens. But again, start, start off with something like this. Where are we at? Right? To correcting the pose and coaching, to figuring out an angle, to realizing that the right side of the frame is a little empty. There's nothing there. So let's just fill it in with some stuff. Right? We went a little wider. So that's a prime example as to sort of the benefit of not only using external display in this sense, all location, but literally sort of working with the whole team and everyone getting an idea of these sort of things. Um, now, is there any more questions? Because we're going to move on to another set, which is a little fun too, but. Uh, GC, no questions, but we had a comment from Adrian. Uh, uh, they said, 
Red uh, would have been a great complementing uh, the back wall and red off the Carmen Ghia and then red the logo on his shirt. Carmen Ghia, good job and good call. Absolutely. Um, and it's true. The, the red would have complimented, especially the red on the shirt and everything else. Again, I didn't want to use red. Um, just I, I found it too contrasting to the blue, right? Like blue and red. I like playing with purple. And again, I want them to sort of stand out a little bit. So that's why I went with purple. But absolutely great suggestion. And you do, when you are playing with colors, you kind of do want to mix or match with complementary colors and, and colors that also work well uh, together. I don't know if the camera's over there. There you go. You're going to swap the battery? By all means, a little hot swap. Hopefully it doesn't. Oh, died for a second. One second, folks. We will be back. Is it back on? There we go. We're back live. Okay. Awesome. Uh, but true, red would have been great. That's a great chair. That's a great chair, actually. This is great. Okay, let's continue, actually. Before I get to the next one, this is good. I like this. And even that pose is good. See? And sometimes the magic just happens. And remember what I was mentioning about the magic? You just have to let it be. Like, Joe just got that chair, sat like that. That's planned. That's meant to be. I love that. That's good, Joe. Hold on there. That's pretty. Yes. Oh, sorry. Let's back this up, folks. Sorry, you can't see that. That's cool. That works. A little different. We're going to red. All right. Yeah, let's go. Good call there. Look at that, Adrian. All right, let's do that. Actually, is it on? Yeah, yeah it's on. Okay, cool. Let's see how we're looking at here. Then I'm gonna try and hide that strobe a little. All right, there. Oh, hold on. All right, well, that actually works good. The only issue I would find with that, though, in this point, is it almost takes away from him, right? And now the attention goes straight to the Carmen Ghia, right? Like it's all, it's almost vertical. We have him, and then we have blue. Um, yeah, it's soft in that. Maybe pitch it up like an like an inch. Well, just so it hits almost like the hood and just sort of brushes off. Beauty. So here we go. Let's see what we're looking at. Anyway, that's not bad. That's not bad. It's a little high, yeah. Then you need just to hit the front. All right. Oh, I'm waiting for it to turn. Uh, I knock it down just a hair. And go up maybe half stop. Would, would you knock it down like two? Yeah. Yeah. Because we get a little more red, a little more pop. GC, uh, question came. Yeah. yeah, go for it. Ask. Uh, Laura wants to know what software you're using to tether into. Uh, oh, I'm using I'm using Capture One uh, version 23. Um, what you're seeing here, by the way, is just a preview. Actually, you can see there. It's called Capture One Live. Um, so what it is is actually your. Oh, actually, that looks way better. Yeah, that looks way better. Good suggestion, Adrian. Um, so I'm using Capture One here, Capture One version 23. Again, you can use Lightroom. Both are good for tethering. Um, the Capture One Live essentially allows me to share the link, and then that link I can then, for example, you could be at home and I can email you that link, and you legit will be seeing exactly what we're seeing here in real time. So you yourself can be at home and be like, oh, I like this image and I like this image. And now we've already, remember we are talking about the culling process? There we go. Now the guessing game's done, right? We have the two shots. Um, so this is Capture One Live, part of Capture One software. Absolutely phenomenal. I love it. But that's a great shot. So let me do a few more of these because I like this setup as is. And then I'm going to shoot a little bit higher too as well, Joe, to get a little bit of the engine. Okay, there you go. Good. And then come in, yeah, lean in, lean, lean into it a little more. There you go, lean in, lean in, there you go. Good, love that. Like that. Oh. Let's get back here again. There you go. Come on, resolve. 
Why is it not resolving? There we go. Look at that. All right. Wicked. All right. So now part of this is we did the portrait type of thing. So now we need some supplemental shots. This is where the fun begins. You ready, Joe? All right. So uh, we're going to get some sparks. We get some stuff happening because that really just sort of adds the element to the builder. We have a portrait. We have something we like. We have also a mix because we have them standing. We have them in the, uh, the milk crates. Um, so now we're going to get to the fun stuff. Oh, let me get back out of this. What was that? There we go. That was GC, weird. one more question for you. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Ramsey's asking, are the practical lights in the room affecting the way the image looks, or does the strobe cancel them out? So the strobe cancels them out because so because I'm shooting at such high um, flash sync speed, um, literally what you're seeing is that, right? Because if I wasn't, Right, so that's that's what you're seeing. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it on screen? Uh oh, can you see that on screen? Yeah, okay. No, yeah, do you see but that's why. On screen. Pardon? Yeah, we can see. It. Okay, so that's me. I just turned the transmitter off. I just turned the transmitter. I was like, "What the heck was happening?" Sorry, <laughs> I. I just uh, I just turned the transmitter off just to show you, right? So I'm sure you have one two hundredth, I believe. Yeah, one two hundredth at this point. So the ambient light won't make any difference in this case, right? All you get is essentially black. So so to get this, it's literally only strobe is what's affecting this this image, if you will, right? And obviously the spill everywhere. So for this now, uh, I don't know if you can see the setup in the shot. Oh. So for this example, we have an octa here, but what we have is we're gonna have Joe. You're gonna be doing welding. Ooh, nice. Welding, some grinding. Okay, some welding and some grinding, some fun stuff. Uh, okay, uh, what do you want? You want to do? What do you want to do first? What are you feeling? You tell me. So you want. Let's do some. Let's do some welding. Uh, some. Eh. Yeah, let's do welding. You have it all set up for welding. So let's see what we're at. Where we're at here, folks. I'm going to do a quick little test and to see. One sec. I just want to make sure. One sec. Hold on. All right. Go for it. One sec. Okay. One sec. You're good. You're good. Let's see if it will. Oh, okay. Huh? Almost died. Almost died. Don't die. Okay. So here we go. So here's a prime example. This is all. Uh, this is all sort of ambient light and the welding machine welder, 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 welder. yeah, welder, uh, doing, uh, welding machine. Yeah. The welder, <laughs> the welder, um, which is not bad. It looks good, but we need to add a little bit more light to it, a little more sauce just to tell the story a little bit better. So we'll turn the strobes on. Um, uh, okay. Yeah. We'll pass underneath, I guess. Or do you want it over it? It should be fine. Yeah? Yeah. We'll okay. Is she stuck? There you go. Okay. Perfect. Uh, yeah. What channel two? Yeah. Okay. Come on. That's in. Okay. Okay. So. Yeah, I was like, I'm yeah, I'm like covered in dust everywhere. Um, okay, so let me do a quick test with this and see where we're at. Uh, go ahead, Joe. Okay, one sec, and let's see if we got it in here. Okay, so it's not too too bad. What the oh, there you go. It's not too too bad, but it's a little bright. So. A little brighter than what I like. Let's turn. Huh? What is too bright? The overall image or because of the arc welder? No, no, no. The arc welder is fine. Because it's going to be hard to, like, I'm not going to focus on that too, too much. Um, yeah, so we'll take everything down. Yeah, I'd say so. Uh, the red 
The kicker's not bad, actually. It's actually quite good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. By the way, the, the kicker I'm referring to is... Where's the camera? The kicker I'm referring to is the light right there on the on the top right up here, the gelled light that we're using. Um, and that's going to fill in nicely. Are we done okay. two stops? Uh, what, yeah, what? Just over one. Okay. One or the third. Okay. Let's do a quick thing. Quick test and we shall see. All right, Joe, whenever you're ready. Okay. Man, that welding is bright. Okay, that's not too bad. I like that. It gets a little moody. I may have gone a little too tight on that. That's on me in terms of shooting. Uh, but I don't mind that. Right? It's a little bit moody. We got a little bit of red. It adds to the story. Um, let's do a few a few of this. Ooh, nice little smoky smoke. You want to put the fan on and blow the smoke away? No, that's good. I like the smoke. Smoke is good. Yeah, smoke is good. Smoke has ambiance. Um, so, yeah. So, give me... I'm going to shoot uh, about five or six frames. And then... So, just... By all means, do your thing. I'll tell you sort of when to stop, as always. Perfect. What's right? Get some more, sparks. more sparks. Oh, boy. All right, here we go. And by the way, this is really interesting to shoot because it's uh, very, very bright. And action, go for it. Good. Well, let's get some... Ah, it smells great. All right, so let's see where we're at. Actually, let's go back to the case. It's a little tighter. That's nice. We got the Carmen Ghee in the background. Not bad. There you go. Sparks are good. See, that looks cool. I like that. All right. So that works for me for that. Let's get some... Grinding action yeah, happening. <laughs> if you have questions, by all means, feel free to ask. Let me exit over here. There we go. Good suggestion, Adrian, on that red. I like that. Because the red has a nice little kick right here, right? So, sparks are cool. All right. Awesome. We have the grinder out. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, of course. So for this, we'll keep the same lighting setup and everything. Just question uh, for uh, Joe. Uh, oh, question for you, Joe. Yes. What is the brand of that welder? What is the brand? Lincoln Welder. Lincoln Welder. Lincoln. Lincoln Welder. Awesome. Lincoln Lynn, as I call it. It's a Lincoln or uh, or a Miller, the two. The two, the, the two big boys, right? Yeah. All right. You ready? Yep. All right. Awesome. All right, let's see. Oh, hold on. I lost my face. Yeah. There you go. We got some welding. Ah, oh, look at that. There you go. That looks nice. Safety gear just to, huh? Don't try this at home. We'll do it without the safety gear. All right. Gear. Okay. Try yes. Safety yeah. splints. Safety third. Safety. I engage the safety splints. All right. You ready? Yep. Oh, hold on. Hold on. One second. One second. One second. Hold on. Go. One second. Sorry. There you go. Now we're good. There you go. All right, go again. Yeah, there you go. All right, let's see. There you go. We got, oh, it's still loading. Awesome. Let's have you, you know what? Can I get you sitting on the, on that little milk crate and then doing that just so you can get a little height. Okay. Awesome. Any questions, folks, feel free to ask by all means in terms of the setup. 
But it's good. We're using so we have we have the sort of the portraits, we have the welding shots, and now we're obviously getting a grinding shot. Now you want to get all these little details, and I'll go even a little bit tighter on the actual hands itself to get details of the process. Him being done is good, it allows me to move a little bit. There you go. And yeah, you're good. It's whatever you want, Joe. Yeah, that was good. Oh, let me back this up. Sorry, folks. I know you guys can't see. <laughs> yeah, grind that forth. There you go. You got some sparks happening. That looks great. See, visually, that's super, super impressive, right? You get something like that. Tell me that doesn't sort of tell the story, right? Look at those beautiful hands. Look at that cloth. Look at the concentration there on that face. Right, but that's great though. So you get logo, you get a little bit of the motion blur from the actual sparks, um, and fun little sort of details like that. So that, that to me sort of works perfectly. Awesome. Uh, question, GC. Yeah, go for it. Question from me. Um, oh, sure. Well, I mean, how how are you powering up that BenQ monitor, and oh. what's the battery life like? Oh, that's very very solid question. So uh, I don't know if you guys can see so. This is the BenQ. Obviously, we, we have it connected to the Mac, but we are using the Tether Tools uh, Low Boy. So it's a stand, and then their Vesta mounts. So I've actually mounted, I've actually mounted the BenQ here uh, with a Vesta mount, and powering it is a DTAP battery. So this DTAP battery uh, is from Tether Tools. It's their part of their on-site power system. Um, so it also has plugs. It also has like the USB C. So oh, sorry, USB rather. So you have USB, and then you have the actual power plugs here, um, but the deep tap battery is in the back. And that is what's providing all the juice exclusively just for the monitor itself. I think it's still full. And it's is it still full? It probably is. Let me check the uh three. We're three out of four. So it's been powering the whole time and we're at three three bars of power. So it's uh it's pretty pretty hefty to be honest with you. And then the laptop itself uh is actually being powered by a power bank as well. I don't know if you guys can see here. So even though there's a lot of cables in terms of me connecting, everything here uh, is literally powered by itself. It's self-sufficient in that sense. Uh, keep in mind, it's a monitor on the field, right? So I can also move this monitor as far as the cable is, of course. Uh, but Brooke, for example, that's 20 feet away can see it, right? But it's also, again, big enough that Will, that was on, you know 20 feet away over there, he can see the adjustments and the things that I'm talking about, right? And, and do things in real time. I can, again, coach Joe and be like, hey, do this, do this, try that. All this because, really, we're dealing with a massive monitor that displays everything. And, again, more importantly, it's also a massive monitor, or 24-inch monitor, rather, that is color accurate, right? And I have to sort of emphasize that because a lot of people I find nowadays tend to sort of run and gun and just shoot for shooting. There's no intention behind it. Um, or the issue is, you know, you think you have the shot and then you go home and you realize all the colors are off and nothing what you thought, you know, happened actually happened, right? Um, so all those sort of things make make for a, a complete package. Um, and yeah, that's great. I love it. And it's also light and portable. So light, portable, and easy to charge. All right. Well, that's pretty much it for me. I don't know if you have any more questions. I don't know if you have any more setups, but... Uh, by all means, uh, Brooke, if you want to come step this way, we'll do a little wrap up. I don't know if you have any more questions, Ali, or anyone from the team. Uh, just a couple of comments. Okay. Uh, Chris said, uh, longer shutter speed might show more sparks from either the grinder or the welder. Absolutely. Uh, so, so the issue is, and, and yes, I agree, 100% drag the shutter. Now, the issue you might also run into when you start dragging the shutter is, it also starts looking less sparks and almost starts looking like a flame, if that makes sense, because you're dragging that shutter. So there's a finessing to it. Now, keep in mind, I'm also doing a live demo, so I would take more than like three test shots to get things dialed in. Uh, but all those things sort of do take into consideration, of course. You know, dragging the shutter is great. Um, I don't know if there's anything you want to add in particular. Any benefits of even like the monitor that you can see things from over there? It does make it easier. It does make it easier. That's true. That's fair. Uh, I don't know if there's anything you want to add, Will, in terms of brown color or the lighting or anything particular. Well, if you're going to use the best lighting, then you should use the best monitor. So. 
There you go. Best lighting, best monitor. The absolutely. Best the best use the best of the best. There you go. Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, Martin, I don't know if there's anything you want to add from your side, even, even your perspective as a, as a, as an assistant looking at the monitor and everything else. It's nice to have. I don't have to hunch over that tiny screen or look over your shoulder at the camera. Yeah. It's good, right? Big visuals make sense. And Joe, I hope this was a decent, good experience for you. It was great. Yeah. And it was easy to see what, uh, what it is that you were talking about when you were referring to moving or moving myself around, bring right. my leg out, things like that. It's hard for me to express like what I see here or what I'm thinking. And I'm trying to express it to you, like move this, like move that. You have no idea what I'm thinking, but. And I don't have any experience in your field. So some of the things you say don't make sense to me, but I can see it. You can see it in real time. Absolutely. So all those things make sense. Uh, and, and seeing things in real time is absolutely beneficial. Uh, beneficial for workflow, whether, whether like I said, whether you're doing this creatively or you're doing this as a profession. So that's uh, pretty much the gist of it. Hey guys, uh, great work. Uh, Adrian, Sydney, just uh, lots of love, lots of uh, compliments coming from. Uh, and then, yeah, awesome. on the BenQ bank side, thank you to the entire team. Uh, awesome uh, workshop, awesome live demo today. Uh, it's not easy to do. There's a lot of hard work and planning, and I see you have the, the team to uh, execute. So, great work, guys. Yeah, yeah we, had, we had some technical glitches at the beginning. I apologize. But, uh, but it happens, right? If it's going to happen, it's going to happen. No, definitely. Uh, so far, so good. And uh, yeah, GC, uh, looking forward to the next one. Always excited to have you present your, uh, you know, just your demonstrations are full of so much knowledge and uh, we can always learn a lot from you. Awesome. We appreciate it. Again, as always, if you have any questions for myself, uh, at Powell like Photo, feel free to send me a DM or anyone on the team as well. Uh, they're all happy to answer questions uh, in their respective fields of knowledge. So yeah, thank you again. And thank you, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I hope you guys learned something. If not, you were at least inspired. Absolutely. Thank you, Brown Color. Thank you, Teddy Tools. Thank you, Joe, Martin, the whole team. Uh, lots of love from the comments. Uh, lots of thank yous. Uh, until the next one, everyone. Awesome. Thanks, guys. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Cheers.